everyone. Thank you very much for the invitation and the uh, very kind introduction. Um, the subject of this talk is fiscal union in Europe. Now this is related to the euro crisis and all of that, and I have to say that uh, coming here to this country, which is so deeply affected by the crisis, um, uh, as someone from uh, Germany, is a bit like uh, traveling to Paris to lecture people about baking baguette, uh, but I will still try uh, and um, say something meaningful uh, uh, about this. Um, now, I have uh, brought a few but not very many slides, so here is what I would like to say. I would like to start by d discussing the issues and by talking a little bit about um, w what the plan for fiscal union is that the European institutions have in mind and, and where we are. Uh, uh, then um, I would like to look at this from uh, maybe a more academic standpoint. You might also say a typically Germanic, uh, stand rigid, inflexible standpoint. I don't know. <laughs> I leave that to you. And then uh, in our three, I would like to suggest uh, you know how a, a way of making a fiscal union uh, maybe uh, work. So why more fiscal integration in the Eurozone? What are the issues? I think there are three issues here. Uh, the first issue is, um, in a currency union, there is no lender of last resort for governments, uh, as there is in countries with their own central banks. So in critical situations, uh, in situations where it is not clear for investors whether public finances are sustainable, um, uh, this uh, can lead to a very difficult situation, and we've seen some of that in the recent crisis. So if there is, uh, you know, if, if national governments have no access to, to a central bank, um, uh, investors may lose faith, you know, investors may panic, maybe just because they think that other investors panic, you know, even if they're, you know, if concerns about the sustainability of public finances is, um, uh, if these concerns aren't so large, you know, uh, as an investor, you better move out if, if you think that other investors might move out. And, um, you know, normally the availability of a central bank as a lender of last resort would uh, prevent this kind of scenario. So economists call this the issue of multiple equilibria, where one equilibrium, the bad equilibrium, is, is one where everybody believes the country is bankrupt, then, you know, everybody will sell, uh, exit, and indeed the country will be bankrupt. Uh, or illiquid, and then there is the good equilibrium where everybody believes that some, some, you know, enough people will have faith in the country, and the result is that uh, the country is indeed solvent. Okay, so this multiple equilibria issue has come out very strongly uh, in the crisis, uh, and um, one idea is to um, uh, have more fiscal integration to address that. Uh, then there is this issue of uh, asymmetric shocks affecting uh, the currency union, so economic shocks affecting some countries within the union, but not all of them. Uh, countries uh, in, a, in a currency union, by definition, lack the instrument of monetary policy to respond to these shocks. There is no exchange rate adjustment. And um, um, then, you know, what is the role of fiscal integration here? The role of fiscal integration is maybe to uh, establish fiscal automatic stabilizers at the central level, some kind of insurance mechanism or transfer mechanism that would protect individual countries uh, if they are hit uh, by some uh, kind of uh, asymmetric shocks. So, uh, you know, what, what are these steps towards more fiscal integration? What are the, the things that are debated? Uh, I've written down six here, um, uh, and I think to some extent these uh, you know, different possible elements of a fiscal union uh, very much reflect different views of what fiscal union actually is. We just discussed over lunch that different people uh, uh, think of very different things when they say uh, fiscal unions. And the first here is maybe the typically German as you know, view of fiscal union, which is more coordination of fiscal policy based on rules, you know, balanced budget rules and uh, other kinds of rules, rules for the level of uh, government debt uh, and all of that. Uh, then the, the, there is the element of having a crisis mechanism, some kind of European monetary fund um, that would work uh, uh, as a lender of last resort. Uh, in, the, in, the, in the case of um, fiscal crisis, uh, we have the ESM. Uh, which is, uh, you know, a crisis mechanism that has been indeed been established. Then there is um, the idea of having a joint uh, government debt restructuring procedure, some kind of insolvency procedure, 
further element could be joint liability for government debt, debt so euro bonds, stability bonds, uh, or something like a debt redemption fund, which is uh, not exactly, I will come back to that proposal. Uh, number five, a fiscal backstop for uh, bank restructuring. So a fiscal backstop for banking union. Banking union itself is an important element um, uh, of fiscal and political union. Uh, and finally, there is the idea of a European fiscal capacity. Uh, so the idea to, uh, of, of having some kind of insurance, fiscal insurance at the central level. This could be a fiscal equalization mechanism, uh, some kind of insurance mechanism some people uh, would like to have a European unemployment insurance uh, system, but the idea is always the same. Uh, if, uh, if a country is hit by an economic crisis, uh, the idea is that it would get some transfers out of, this common, uh, out of these common resources that would help it uh, uh, in this situation. Now, these are all possible elements of, of uh, fiscal union. Some, some of them have been... Um, introduced already, but I think it's interesting to ask what is the plan uh, the European institutions themselves have? You know, what do they have in mind when uh, they talk about fiscal union? And I would like to very briefly, I'm sure it's, you know, many of you know this, uh, I would li like to mention two papers which are important in this regard. The first is a paper by Hermann van Rompuy, the president of the, of the European Council. Uh, he uh, has published a paper, you know, it's actually the paper of the four presidents, uh, Hermann van Rompuy, the president of the council, uh, Mario Draghi, um, uh, and uh, 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 the president of the European Commission, uh, Barroso, and I've forgotten who the fourth was, but uh, anyway, so the, the, the first, uh, first uh, author uh, is Hermann van Rompuy, uh, and it is a paper of the European Council. Um, this paper suggests three stages of... Uh, uh, setting up fiscal union. So stage one um, is uh, to be completed until, you know, 2013 or mid to uh, 14, and it includes the following element, ensuring fiscal sustainability and breaking the link between banks and sovereigns um, by uh, completing uh, the, the, the reformed framework for policy, fiscal policy coordination. Uh, so this includes these things here, the, the six-pack, uh, the two-pack, uh, and other things. Uh, then the next element, the establishment of the European Banking Union by setting up the single supervisory mechanism, so introducing uh, common banking sector supervision in Europe. Uh, this has happened. Uh, and then uh, uh, to agree further on, on further steps towards banking union. That was uh, stage one in their plan. Stage two, to be completed in 2014, completion of the banking union by setting up a common bank resolution or restructuring mechanism. This, uh, you know, has just been decided, um, as you know, then setting up a mechanism based on contracts providing financial support in return for structural and growth enhancing reforms. You know, this is my own wording, it's not the wording of the, uh, of the text, but uh, this is an important idea. It's the idea to establish a new instrument where uh, countries would get money from Europe in exchange for structural reforms. Uh, uh, I, I will come back to this idea. Um, so this is something that hasn't been completed. And then they, uh, the, um, this paper suggests a stage three, uh, post 214, um, establish a fiscal capacity. Uh, so it should be, this fiscal capacity should be well-defined and limited. Uh, and it should be an insurance mechanism. And the paper emphasizes that uh, what they have in mind is not uh, a fiscal equalization mechanism that would redistribute uh, income across countries. You know, a lot of federations have fiscal equalization mechanisms that redistribute from rich to poor. Uh, now, this, the council paper emphasizes that there should be no such, as economists call it, ex ante redistribution. The idea here is to really have uh, an insurance mechanism. An insurance mechanism, a fiscal capacity as an insurance mechanism would imply, for instance, that Ireland would tra make transfers to Germany if there was a crisis in Germany now and uh, a crisis that didn't hit Ireland. Okay. Or, yeah, so, so, uh, or maybe Ireland is not the best example, but you know, money could flow from Greece to Ireland or from Greece to Luxembourg. Uh, if Luxembourg was hit by a negative shock, uh, 
uh, and uh, so that, that's something that wouldn't happen in standard fiscal equalization system. You know, this is insurance as opposed uh, to redistribution. Okay, so the council paper emphasizes this very much, obviously, because there are concerns in the high income, high income countries that you know they would be burdened by uh, you know having to pay transfers to the poorer countries. Okay, but I think it's important to bear that in mind. It's not something we usually have in federations. Uh, or yeah, maybe something to be discussed. Do we have that or, or don't we have that? But that's um, um, so the key idea in this plan in for for the longer term. Uh, and then there's also the uh, the idea to increase the degree of common decision making in taxation and employment policy. So taxation and employment policies are areas where the union doesn't have competences. So this is not. Uh, part of the of EU competences now but uh, you know here is the idea that there should be more coordination in uh, in this area so this is the the council paper and the european commission so this paper is called uh, towards a genuine economic and monetary union and, and it's from december 2012 and the european commission has almost at the same time has published a paper called a blueprint for a deep and genuine economic union and this paper is more ambitious uh, it also proposes three stages of moving toward fiscal union. So stage one until mid-2014 also includes the idea of reform and completing the reform of fiscal policy coordination, you know, changing the rules of the stability and growth pacts uh, and, and uh, changing the rules for sanctions for, for countries that violate it. Um, the, paper, the stage one also includes steps towards banking union, uh, banking supervision and regulation, um, and uh, stage one here includes the, as a third element, the establishment of a convergence and competitive instrument within the EU budget. Okay, this is again this idea of contracts. So the countries would sign contracts with Europe, with Brussels, and um, you know they would receive help transfers in exchange for uh, you know certain uh, for certain uh, reforms. Stage two, the medium term, 214 until 217, um, introduce what the Commission calls a proper fiscal capacity. So this would be, uh, you know, probably closer to what Van Romper has in mind with his insurance uh, mechanism. Again, coordination in taxation and employment policies. Um, then, very ambitious, introduce a debt redemption fund. Um, the debt redemption fund uh, was invented by the German Council of Economic Advisors. Uh, it, you know, in, in uh, very shortly, the debt redemption fund uh, is, includes the idea that all countries with uh, a debt to GDP ratio above 60% would uh, be allowed to load off, you know, the excessive debt into a common fund. You know, the fund would be commonly guaranteed, uh, and the the fund would be ba paid back. You know, this debt would be uh, paid back over a period of, let's say, 20 years. Uh, and countries would have to be, make very strong commitments. Uh, for instance, devote certain taxes uh, to, paying, uh, to paying down this debt. Uh, there is even the idea in this, uh, I mean, these are academics, okay? So there's even the idea that central banks, national central banks, should uh, um, uh, provide the gold reserves, another reserve they have as a, you know, as a security. Uh, to uh, for for this fund, and um, the idea is that we have a debt overhang in Europe, very high debt levels, and how do we get rid of it? And and this is the idea, you know, this uh, is the suggestion. Uh, so that's what one thing the the Commission wants to do, and then um, the fourth element in stage two is the common issuing issuance of short term debt. So the idea of euro bonds or stability bonds, but limited to uh, short term. Debt. It is clear that this would require treaty changes. Uh, and then stage three, establish a fiscal capacity, uh, um, uh, sorry, es establish uh, a fiscal cap capacity in the form of an autonomous euro area budget. Now here the euro area uh, is emphasized and here is the idea to, you know, next to the European budget, to the EU budget to set up a euro area uh, budget uh, providing for a fiscal capacity to support mo member states in absorbing economic shocks. You know, here you again have this insurance idea. Uh, then introduce euro bonds. Uh, the Commission calls them stability bonds. The Commission has written a paper where it describes the concept. Uh, um, 
And um, then the Commission writes that this will require parallel steps towards a political union with reinforced uh, democratic uh, legitimacy. So um, I would like to focus, I mean, this raises many issues, but I would like to focus on the issue of governance in the uh, little time that is left. Um, what, you know, what do these plans actually mean for, uh, for the future of uh, fiscal policy governance and economic policy governance uh, in Europe? And uh, the reason I focus on this is that I think that there is a lot of confusion going on about this. And uh, I think one of the flaws of our debate uh, in Europe, I mean, there are many positive things, but one, one of the, 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 the issues, really, is that there is no clear, no open debate about government's governance structures. Uh, uh, there is the danger that we end up with a very bad governance structure with uh, soft budget constraints and uh, completely uh, distorted uh, incentives. And I think that there are actually two sentences in the Commission mission paper uh, that reflect this. And uh, let me just read them to you. Uh, the first sentence is this. Financial markets play an important role in creating in incentives for countries to run sustainable public finances by pricing the risk of default into the rate at which sovereigns can borrow money. You know, if you like, this is the old Maastricht idea that uh, public finances would be disciplined through financial markets. It is the idea that national government, national parliaments are responsible for fiscal policy and that there is no joint liability. And then there is another sentence. Um, you know, this is at the beginning of the paper. And the, at the end of the paper, there's this sentence. A deeply integrated economic and financial governance framework could allow a common issuance, issuance uh, of public debt. And then it goes on, which would enhance the functioning of markets and the conduct of monetary policy. You know, I don't think this is about the functioning of markets uh, uh, or the conduct of monetary policy. Uh, it is clearly about you know, uh, introducing joint liability of, for, for government debt. And this has consequences. And you know, what are these consequences? I would like to um, uh, suggest thinking about this in, in very basic terms um, by distinguishing, uh, if you like, two uh, polar forms of economic governance in Europe, and um, they are um, summarized in this, uh, I apologize about that, typical classroom type matrix. Uh, on the t in the top row, in the horizontal row of the matrix, you have um, control over fiscal policy, so who decides, uh, who controls fiscal policy, who makes decisions about uh, the issuance of government debt, for instance. This can be the national level or the European level. We can do this nationally or jointly. <coughs> and then there is liability, you know, who, who is responsible for this, for this debt. This can also be European, so Europe is responsible, euro bonds, uh, stability bonds, or um, the national governments are responsible. And, you know, if you have national control and national liability, you end up in what I've called here a decentralized fiscal union. Uh, you know, this was basically the Maastricht concept. Okay, they, the idea was, okay, national governments are responsible. They, they decide there are some rules for coordination, but the decision is with national parliaments, and na national parliaments are responsible. This is economically, this is, in principle, as a governance structure, this is meaningful. It didn't work, and we will d discuss in a minute why, why it didn't work in Europe. But this is a meaningful setup. The other meaningful setup is to have European liability and European control. <coughs> if you have, you know, Control and liability at the European level, this is, in terms of basic incentives, uh, something that can work. That ma this makes sense. What doesn't make sense is uh, having uh, European liability, this corner here on the right, having EU-wide liability, joint liability for government debt, and national decision-making. Now, this doesn't work uh, because it allows free riding uh, on the debt. And uh, I'm afraid that the status quo is not too different from exactly the situation. So we have the guarantee of the European Central Bank for government debt. You know, it's some kind of implicit guarantee. What does it mean? It's not quite clear. But uh, I think there is a clear danger in Europe that we are moving exactly to this corner on the right-hand side. And this, is, this would mean that we have soft budget constraints in Europe. And this, this is an issue we know from federations and from, sub, um, uh, from decentral government, from regional or state governments in federations. And it's a very serious issue. 
And, uh, you know, I think we, you know, a meaningful fiscal union has to, you know, in terms of the basic governance structures, has to make a decision between these two governance structures. Where do we want to go in Europe? And as the European uh, Commission has said, to set up a centralized fiscal union, you know, I'm not against it, you know, it's something that can work. But to, to have that, we need full-fledged democratic control. We, we need a full parliament uh, in, in Brussels. Brussels that, you know, has the right to tax and, and represents citizens. And I don't think Europe is ready for that. And if it is not ready for that, uh, we need to focus on this thing here on the, uh, in the corner uh, below. And the question is, how might that work? You know, these two sentences I've just read to you from the Commission report, you know, they place the Commission concept somehow in both areas, you know, and it's not clear where we really are, and, and I think we, for the moment at least, uh, we have to try and, and make this decentralized concept work. Now, we do have uh, policy coordination and some kind of uh, interest or control over national fiscal policies at the European level, but it's not strong enough. You know, it's just not strong enough, it's not binding enough. Uh, so how, how could this work? Uh, five points. National parliaments are ultimately responsible for national fiscal policy. I think that banking union plays a key role here. Why did the Maastricht setup not work in a nutshell? Uh, you know, when the idea came up to restructure Greece, uh, uh, the, the biggest obstacle was uh, the fear that there might be a financial meltdown. And I think the, it is the main objective of banking union to make sure that uh, the European banking system doesn't collapse if there is a restructuring of government debt. So banking union, for me, uh, is of key uh, importance. Three, we need uh, and some kind of insolvency procedure for sovereigns. Um, now, you can do this without having an explicit procedure, uh, as we have done in the case of Greece. I think the, one of the lessons of the Greek case is that we need an explicit mechanism. My institute has, has produced a proposal. I don't want to go into this. There are other proposals on the table, but I, I think we need an explicit system, really, because uh, our problem is not as it was 10 years ago when the IMF proposed this. Our problem is not that uh, governments don't have access to finance. Our problem is that they have too easy access to finance. And uh, at least they had that before the crisis, and, and we have to address that. Uh, <coughs> I think that fiscal, fiscal and economic policy coordination is helpful, and fiscal rules are helpful. You know, I think we, we, we should have them, but we shouldn't expect too much from them. You know, when things get difficult, uh, you know, they, uh, what, they can, what we can achieve through these rules is limited. So uh, we, we shouldn't expect too, too much from it. Uh, and uh, final point, I think the ECB cannot act as a lender of last resort for national governments. So the current state of affairs, where there is so much uncertainty about the OMT program, uh, but an implicit guarantee of the ECB uh, leads to an inconsistent governance structure. You know, we cannot have joint li liability for government debt and zero or insufficient control uh, at the European level. Uh, and I th the, for me, these are the essentials of fiscal union, uh, and we can combine that with uh, uh, an unemployment insurance system, with uh, mechanism, mechanisms for shock absorption. But I think these are the basics, so we have to be very clear, I believe, about what the governance structure is. Uh, and this governance structure, I think the difference to Maastricht, last point, the difference to Maastricht is that um, there was not, indeed not enough political integration in Europe. So I think to preserve, paradoxically perhaps, to preserve national responsibility and autonomy in fiscal policy, we need more integration, not less integration. Uh, but we uh, shouldn't put ourselves in a position uh, where we really have joint liability for government debt, but no, uh, no joint control. Thank you.